you see beauty? Of course, you see beauty with your eyes, but do you see beauty with your heart? Looking to nature, we view the awesomeness of God's creations in both their simplicity and simultaneously in their complexity. Simple in that plant and animal life in the most basic of ways simply go about their daily business of propagating the species and being for very survival. That's their basic job day in and day out, just to go through their own simple cycles of life. They are complex in the way that each is so wonderfully created, both individually and where they fit into the expansive circle of life on Earth. Just how many species and varieties of flowers and scents did God create? How many trees? And then what are the animals, the fruits, the vegetables? And then we have all of aquatic life, whales, dolphins, fish, and the undersea world vegetation. Consider also the beauty majesty and individuality of the various countries and regions of the earth herself. It simply takes my breath away to consider it all. Now think about it, ponder it and drink it in. Consider the sheer vastness of it. Consider all things in their purest state, unmarred by man. What God creates is pure, holy, perfect and absolutely astounding. Now, what wells up in your heart when you consider the enormity of it all? Does it bring you to a place of praise? When you think about the, just the magnitude in that God has created these things. I know for myself, the words that come to my lips are my God, my God, you are so magnificent. We'll hear today, and we'll hear now, from our beloved Moria and what he has to say to us about praise and gratitude. Now, his words today come from a dictation that was given in the spring's time, so it gives you context of his words even further. And we're looking now to volume two, number 15. He gave this dictation in April of 1959. Sincere feelings of praise and gratitude to our Father, Mother, God, released from the heart of any one, create wide open doors into the realms of all good, through which may continually flow that which is God's goodwill in practical physical manifestation for all. Now all of life, animate or inanimate, in the human or elemental kingdoms, enjoys the hope of visible, tangible fulfillment fulfillment which spring brings for its magical electric currents of new life pass completely through all sub all the substance of the planet and its evolutions as well as through the atmosphere fortunate indeed is the beautiful bird life which can and does praise the good god in lovely song However, outside of bird life, for the most part, the kingdom of nature has no voice or melody of praise to offer, just expressing in quiet beauty and the greatest perfection it can, that which will turn men's hearts in grateful divine love to the giver of life everywhere. Now I say we can certainly offer praise to God on behalf of all his magnificent creatures even those who are unable to express it outwardly as the beautiful songbirds do. But even so, let us not neglect the beautiful songbirds and let's all offer glory and praise to our God for them as well and join our voices with their songs of praise. And we should be praising God for all the wonders of his creation. Now, how do you feel when you praise God? Do you praise from your heart or do you praise from your mind? Do you fully recognize the sheer magnitude of the complexities of all that God has created? We take so very much for granted. The true wonder of it all genuinely is beyond all mortal comprehension. 
Now, in preparing today's teaching, I took the time and had to ponder the connectedness of beauty, praise, and love. What comes first? Does praise lead to a heart filled with love, or does a heart filled with love lead to praise? Does the appreciation of beauty lead to one or the other? And certainly, as I thought about this, I understood that they're all intertwined. And what came to the fore is, is the picture of it all. If you think back to early mathematics and early grammar school, we all learned about the Venn diagram, right? And the Venn diagram has circles. So we've got praise and thanksgiving and beauty and love in each of their circles. And then they all come together. And where they come to, together in that center is God. So all those things are part of God and God is part of all those things, all those emotions, all those feelings. And now if we're honest with ourselves, we, we, will, we will accept and we will acknowledge that it is a stretch now and again to rise above our own karma and our tests and the barrage of negativity that is before us every single day and that has the ability at times to burden us everything that's going on around that plant going on around the planet and it is difficult at times to rise above that and be in that vibration of praise and love and thanksgiving so where do we go for respite from the decay the destruction and the shifting that's taking place around us. In a personal and a shared world of burdens, I felt the desire to construct a roadmap, a roadmap that will bring us up and out and above all of the rubble, out of the heap, if you will. A simple path that will return us to the vibration that Maury speaks of further in his dictation. Do you know that one of the most glorious daily manifestations of the ascended host is the releasing of their sincere feelings of praise and gratitude to their source just for the gift of life itself? Do you know that even we who lovingly endeavor to free earth rejoice with her and her evolutions even at the beauty of springtime such as you are enjoying today? Why, just last Sunday, our brotherhood at Darjeeling gathered in the lovely council room of our retreat and there joined our voices in grateful words and song to a gracious father of love and his divine mes messengers. Particularly in this instance, did we direct our grateful love to the magnificent being Amaryllis, goddess of spring. Long and glorious, patient and constant has been her service to this dear star and even the works of her hands. In gratitude for her love, endeavor to express their adoration by producing the greatest possible beauty of perfection in form, color, and fragrance. So always does love beget more love. All increases only after its kind. So I say, look to nature. Whatever is before you, as you look around, see it with awe, whether it be a raindrop, a snowflake, a leaf, or even an industrious little ant. Marvel at it. Behold in it the magnificent of God, magnificence of God who created it so perfectly, so effortlessly, for he is truly omnipotent and omniscient, and, excuse me, omnipotent and omniscient. So let's linger here for a moment. Let's linger in nature. I invite you to close your eyes. And we're going to think about how nature has touched us and continues to touch us. So close your eyes and follow me. Have you ever walked along the ocean shore feeling the soft, warm sand between your toes and the gentle, foamy surf caress your feet? Have you looked out to the horizon over the water to see porpoises playing in the distance? Beautiful, happy, free beings 
breaching the waves and frolicking with one another. Have you ever leaned into a flower, letting its petals tickle your nose as you drink in the fullness of its fragrance? And what of the way God kisses the sun that shines brilliant in the sky? Or the way he paints the sunset from his palette of color and the leaves that gently fall during autumn? And what of winter and the night sky? Glorious at any time, the night sky is even more so during the cold crisp of winter. The midnight blue, a beautiful backdrop for the twinkling stars. What constellations can you see where you are? In the winter time, I can see Orion. Orion is right over my house. And if I can see Orion, I can see Sirius, the God star. Now, how awesome is that? And now in the summertime, we open our windows and we let the songs of the, bit of the, of the birds fill our homes. And where I am, we might be giving safe crossing to turtles that are newly hatched or going to deposit their eggs to keep them free from the road traffic. Everywhere, animals are giving birth, fruits and vegetables are beginning to ripen. We just see the awesomeness of God's creation all around us. Now open your eyes and wherever you are, look out the window. There is something of nature that you can drink in, something you can focus on. It doesn't matter where you are. Maybe it's cloudy and that's okay. Think of the awesomeness of the clouds. How do they know when to rain? How do they know to showers with gentle drops and not a deluge? Maybe all you can see is the sunlight. And there again, there God is present. So wherever you are, whether it's a view of beautiful mountains, glorious gardens, or if you have to look beyond the buildings of the city to find God in the sunlight or the clouds, look to God in nature and let it take your breath away. Look at nature, drink in its beauty, and be in awe. And let that awe turn to love, love of the Father and the Christ in awe. And let that love turn to praise and thanksgiving, for God is in his heaven, and all is right with the world. All our tests, all our sorrows, our karma, our testament that God has not given up on us because we are still here, moving through another cycle of opportunity. We're here giving it yet another go. And if God has not given up on us, then who are we to offer anything less than praise, thanksgiving, and love? So that's the roadmap. When faced with despair, feeling burdened or unloved, look to the beauty of nature and, your, and let your spirit move through that portal to that wonder, that beauty that is God everywhere all around us if we will only see it with our hearts. And let each of us, as we drink that in and remember the glory rise in wonder and thanksgiving and praise and above that which wants to weigh us down because we know the way is up and we know that while we're here, we are charged with rising above everything that looks to hold us back. Now, Moria, further in his dictation, create, um, excuse me, quotes the great Shakespeare. If you have not virtue, Assume it. Moria says to us, therefore, if yours is not the nature of one to whom the expressing of sincere gratitude comes easily, try to develop this ability. In the privacy of your own soul and room, daily try to express sincere feelings of gratitude to your God for all the good you now have. Then as surely as you keep this up, more must come to you. 
to many, writing a thing down is much easier for them than speaking than the speaking of words. So if that is easier for you to do, try that method of creating and loosing from within yourself the feelings of a thankful heart to your maker. Such a practice will make all the rest of your way home much happier. Also, it will shorten the journey considerably. Of course, need I add here that you are always most welcome to ask us of our feelings of any God virtue, and we shall be glad to give them to you. And so I will share here with you some references from the Bible. So sometimes when we're really feeling the, in our down, dark, down doldrums of any given day, sometimes we may need a little kickstart, something to get our own heart and our own vocations going. So I share with you some verses from the book of Psalms. Psalm 106, verse 1, praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Psalm 86, verse 12, with all my heart, I will praise you, O Lord, my God, I will give glory to your name forever. And this next one was part of our opening invocation from our Reverend Evans. Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your names, O Most High. Psalm 69, verse 30. Then I will praise God's name with singing, and I will honor him with thanksgiving. Psalm 97, verse 12. May all who are godly rejoice in the Lord and praise his holy name. Psalm 103, verse 1. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Psalm 4, verse 7. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. And finally, from the New Testament. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And in closing, in this dictation, our beloved Moria says to us, let the majesty and glory of our feelings of sincere gratitude of the ages to and for life flood in, through, and around your entire being and worlds limitlessly increase every time you think of me. I would have it so for you, for I love you. Now concentrate on these words as I read them again. Feel the presence of Moria as he speaks to your heart and your soul. Let the majesty and glory of our feelings of sincere gratitude of the ages to and for life flood in, through, and around your entire beings and worlds, limitly, limitlessly increase every time you think of me. I would have it so for you. For I love you. Feel his presence overshadowing you. Our beautiful, beloved Moria. What a beautiful gift from Moria. What a beautiful gift from the chief of our Darjeeling Council. In love and gratitude, we salute thee, El Moria. Moria, we salute thee. Moria, we salute thee. Moria, we salute thee. God's love endures forever, and may we take these words to heart and see his glory in everything around us and never be in less than a vibration of true praise, thanksgiving, and love. Thank you, Maureen. From our hearts to your own, thank you.